The film begins with a wide-angle image far above the tree lean of a lush, verdant jungle. A series of photos of Jake Sully, a disabled war veteran and former Marine, are intercut. He awakens on a massive spaceship en route to Pandora, a densely wooded Earth-like moon orbiting Polyphemus, a massive blue planet akin to Jupiter. He is one of several travelers who have awakened after nearly six years of cryosleep en route to Pandora. As he drifts out of his sleeping pod in zero-g, he is attended to by the ship's crew. He unlocks his locker, which is labeled Sully T. Jake tells us that he has a murdered twin brother, Tom, who was to be part of a high-level initiative controlled by corporate and military planners to research Pandora's environment and population. Because Jake and his brother are genetically identical, he was provided with a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, take up his brother's contract with a corporate military corporation and go light years away to a hitherto unseen world, Pandora. Jake agrees to the arrangement as his brother's body is incinerated, acknowledging the concepts of being free and having a new start. Jake is one of several troops and civilians ready to land on Pandora, 4.3 light years away from Earth. While the other passengers depart and take their first steps onto the base, which is known as Hell's Gate and is ringed by a massive perimeter fence, Jake follows in his wheelchair, receiving the nickname Meals on Wheels from a few snooty Marines. Jake rushes to a military meeting where Colonel Miles Querich is addressing the gathering soldiers and a few civilians. He informs them that they are no longer in Kansas, and he tells them about Pandora's indigenous inhabitants. Jake visits a research lab and meets scientist Norm Spellman and Dr. Max Patel, two Avatar program participants. Humans are unable to breathe Pandora's air, however the Avatar program allows a human to interface with their own avatar, a genetically bred human Nasix hybrid, and operate as if they were a Nasix native. Jake will be able to move and breathe in his virtual body once more. Dr. Grace Augustine, the program's science lead, awakens in a specially built pod that ties her to her avatar and flicks up the lid just as Jake and Norm walk into the science department. Norm tells Jake that she enjoys plants better than people, and she emerges from her pod to chat with Norm in Nasix. She turns to Jake after being satisfied with Norm's knowledge of the language. She informs him that she needs his brother Tom, the PhD who prepared for the Pandora trip for three years, but she doesn't need Jake because Jake has no lab experience and has never been attached to an avatar. Jake attempts to indicate that he is a quick learner, but Grace is unimpressed. The next morning, Jake and Norm are linked to their avatars for the first time in the lab Jake, as his avatar, awakens in a separate room, surrounded by other avatars and employees. Within a few seconds, Jake is making his handlers uneasy because he is delighted with his ability to use his legs again and is attempting to walk for the first time since being a paraplegic. Jake encounters Grace's avatar, who is more patient than actual Grace and accompanies Jake to the barracks, where he is ultimately persuaded to relax. Jake examines his neural cue, a lengthy appendage that resembles a hair braid, before falling asleep. Jake, reconnected with his avatar, flies across Pandora's surface in Trudy's gunship alongside Grace, Norm, and others. The crew arrives in a wilderness, where Grace and Norm begin collecting flora samples and taking measurements. Jake becomes distracted by his surroundings and stumbles into a field of helicoradian flowers, which are fairly tall and shrink when touched by Jake. Trouble arises as Jake is confronted by a titanothere, a powerfully armored, hammer-wielding monster. Grace tells him to maintain his ground and not fire, otherwise the animal would become enraged and charge. Jake is able to maintain his position only because another beast, a panther-like Thanator, has approached him from behind, causing the titans to flee and circle their young. Grace orders Jake to go, and the Thanator pursues him, separating Jake from his group. He loses his rifle and is taken down by the beast, but he is able to rescue himself by releasing his bag. The chase eventually brings Jake to a waterfall, 
where he dives to safety, leaving the Vanader howling above him. Jake's team looks for him, but Trudy says they must return to base since night operations are not permitted. Grace claims he won't make it through the night. It's now dark, and Jake is honing a long stick into a spear. This time, Jake is being watched from above by a Nasix. The Nasix shoots an arrow towards Jake and prepares to shoot when little, ethereal, glowing creatures descend on her bow. The archer withdraws. Jake is being pursued by a pack of viper wolves. He immerses the tip of his spear in a flammable pitch-like substance. He ignites the end and holds it up like a torch to the viper wolves, who surround him, fangs bared and jaws snarling. The animals assault Jake, he fights back, killing several before being overpowered by others. The archer who had been watching Jake joins the fight on his side. She kills some viper wolves and drives the others away. She scorns his thanks and tells him that everything is his fault, that they did not have to die, and that he should go back to where he came from. Jake inquires as to whether she feels this way and why she assisted him. You have a strong heart and no fear, she says. But you're dumb. Jake seeks to follow his savior up into a tree, asks for her assistance, and expresses his want to learn. He is disgusted and instructed to return, since sky people cannot be taught. The Iowa seeds resurface and begin to land on the frightened Jake. He inquires as to what they are. Very pure spirits, she responds, and Jake is engulfed in them, leaving an effect on his friend. When the seeds float away, she relents and invites him to accompany her. Jake is killed by a BOLO thrown by an Omatakea warrior patrol as he tries to keep up with his savior, Natairi. Tsute, the next in line to the throne and the man Natairi is intended to marry, is their commander. Tsute orders his soldiers to carry him along to Tashik, father, approximate spelling, and Iwa. Natairi prevents them from hurting Jake by informing them there has been a sign from Iwa, mother. Jake is introduced to Natairi's parents, the king and queen of the tribe, Itoken and Emoat. Jake informs the elders that he is a warrior, dreamwalker, and that he wishes to learn from them. Emoat pricks Jake's chest and tastes his blood, declaring that it is Iwa's desire for him to live with the Omatakea and for Natairi, however reluctantly, to teach him their ways and customs. At morning show, all of the scientists, including Grace, are listening intently to everything Jake says. Norm is disappointed and depressed, he was Grace's first pick to bond with the Omatakea. Jake has won over the military and corporate representatives. The next scenes focus upon Avatar Jake's training with Natairi and human Jake's comments on his adventures via the video log he dictates at the end of each day's activity. He forms a kinship with his dire horse, a sacred animal to the Nasix. Jake informs the Colonel and Selfridge about the Omatakea's home, the massive home tree. It has a significant amount of unobtainium beneath it. Jake explains the construction of the 1,000-foot-tall tree. Quaritch sees a chance to destroy the tree, but Jake asks that he be given the authority to speak with the Nasix and persuade them to depart. Grace, seeing that Jake is being controlled by Quaritch, Selfridge, and the rest of the Mining Operations Military Division, decides to relocate her operation to the Hallelujah Mountains, a secluded location of enormous, floating islands holy to the Nasix and rich in unobtainium. Jake describes his language lessons in his next video log and compares his time with the Nasix to field stripping a weapon. Jake forms a relationship with the tendrils in his line and as he rides the flying animal, he observes that he isn't much of a horseman, but he was born to do this. Jake, Natairi, and the others ride together to the Tree of Souls, the Nasik's most holy location. While on a hunting mission, Jake and Natairi are abruptly chased and attacked by a Nasik's beast known as Torek, whose name means, Last Shadow, the Torek's shadow, once seen, is generally the final shadow one ever gets to see, as its attack is nearly invariably lethal. 
She informs him that the last person to ride a Torek was her grandpa's grandfather, who used the horse to bring the five Na six tribes together at a difficult period. Torek Makto, rider of the last shadow, would be given to such a person. When Jake regains his human form, the colonel approaches him and informs him that his job has been completed and that he will return to Earth the next day. And, true to his promise, the colonel has made arrangements for Jake to receive the therapy he requires to restore use of his legs. Jake intends to postpone his departure because he believes he is about to be inducted into the tribe and acknowledged as one of them, at which point he will be able to negotiate with the Nasix to move. The colonel agrees. Jake attends a Nasix ritual and discovers that the Nasix believe that everyone may be born twice. Natairi is awakened in the morning by falling trees, followed by the presence of bulldozers. As the jungle crumbles around Natairi, who is pulling and carrying Jake to safety, soldiers advance. Jake is preparing to join with his avatar at their isolated location, and when he finally awakens, he gets aboard one of the bulldozers and attempts to stop it, eventually breaking its camera system and attracting gunfire. Other Nasix warriors arrive, and the colonel, who is watching movies back at the base, identifies Jake in his avatar form as the one who attempted to thwart their mission. The bulldozers continue their work, destroying the precious site. The Nasix desire war on home tree. Grace and Jake are opposed to it. There is a heated argument. Sute attempts to murder Jake after learning that Jake and Natairi are bonded for life while he and Natairi were engaged. The ties between Grace and Jake's avatars and their physical selves are abruptly severed by the infuriated colonel, who arrests Jake for attempting to halt the bulldozers. Grace reveals that Pandora's trees form a network with more cerebral connections than the human brain, and that the Nasix can access it. Jake requests permission to return to the Omatakea and persuade them to leave, and he is given one hour to do so. Jake and Grace are not invited to return, Jake is rejected by Natairi. Jake and Grace have both been chained and abandoned by the Omatakea, who are prepared to attack the humans, who have come in a massive fleet of flying ships. Many Omatakea are slaughtered. Emoat releases Jake and Grace and requests that they save the tribe. When Jake comes, he is rebuffed once more by Natairi when he attempts to soothe her. Itukan, Natairi's father, is murdered by a massive piece of shrapnel, his last request is for Natairi to carry his holy bow and lead his people. The damage appears to be infinite, until Jake and Grace return to their human bodies and are swiftly arrested for treason. Trudy enters the cell containing Jake, Grace, and Norm. She dupes their security by claiming she doesn't want anything to do with them, only to knock out the guard seconds later. Grace is shot and injured by the colonel as they prepare to depart the base. Trudy's spacecraft is flown to the distant facility in the floating mountains, and the crew takes a pod to another location in the forest. Jake regains control of his avatar body. He knows that in order to win the Nasik's confidence, he must take things to the next level. He summons his banshee and goes in search of Torek. His method is simple, but it can quickly lead to death, Jake believes that the Torek never seeks an assault above himself, thus he can be attacked in this manner. Jake leaps from his banshee to the rear of the Torek. Next, we watch him arriving on the Torek at the Tree of Souls during an Omatakea ritual. The Omatakea are astounded to see the fulfillment of their greatest tale. Tsute, the tribe's new leader, accepts Jake's new status as Torek Makto. He holds Jake in high regard. Jake persuades Emoat to assist Grace, who is dying. Emoat starts the preparations, which include positioning Grace's human and avatar bodies near the Tree of Souls. Grace's consciousness will be permanently transferred to her avatar. The human military has seen an increase in the number of Na-6 in the region, from a few hundred to two thousand in a single day. Their idea is to convert a space shuttle into a huge bomb transport. The Tree of Souls is their goal, and the attack is scheduled for the next day. 
Quaritch gathered his forces, mostly to guard the Valkyrie shuttle. The bombship and the armada are making their way toward the Tree of Souls. The combined Nasix force begins to descend from the skies and land. Jake, Tsute, and other warriors engage in combat with military aircraft, mostly scorpion attack ships. On both sides, casualties are mounting. The gunships have unrivaled firepower, but they are no match for the Declans, who capture them and smash them together. Colonel Quaritch's Dragonfly spacecraft pursues and shoots at Jake, who is riding the Torek. Trudy arrives and starts fire on the Colonel's command ship, Natyri's Banshee is shot down and killed, and Norm's avatar is gravely injured and leaps back to his human form. Jake instructs Natyri to leave the fight through a communicator. A battalion of Titanotheres, Pandora's massively armored dinosaur-like beasts, appears and attacks the Earth soldiers through what remains of the surrounding forest. They easily annihilated troops and soldiers wearing amp suits. Natyri rejoins the fight, overjoyed that Iwa has heard Jake's appeal for aid, with many other Pandoran species following her. When a Thanator approaches nearby, it bows submissively to her. Jake appears in his avatar before the colonel gets a chance to assassinate Natyri. The colonel fights in his amp suit, while Jake fights as his avatar, armed simply with a piece of pipe. Natyri suddenly fires an arrow at the colonel, impaling him in the middle of his chest. The colonel is shaken and unable to resume his assault on Jake. Natyri's second arrow connects with the first. It knocks the colonel dressed in the amp suit to the ground. Back at Hell's Gate, the majority of the remaining humans are being marched aboard a shuttle to be sent to Earth, however, a few Earth citizens, including Norm and Dr. Patel, are invited to stay on Pandora. Jake signs out in his farewell video log, where we discover that he has decided to permanently transfer his consciousness to his avatar. Jake goes through Iwa's eye in a ceremony identical to Grace's, Natyri watches over him as he awakens in his avatar. <laughs>